movie fans, welcome to the Cold and Trash Horror Movie Grind the Podcast. I am your host, Ian. This is the show in which we grind on the absolute worst horror and sci-fi movies we can find and make fun of just how bad they are, as well as praise the good cool classics that have been lost throughout time. Now get ready, because we're about to dive real deep inside of Hollywood's dumpster in search of the good, the so bad it's good, and the fucking ugly. Now put on your seatbelt, grab a beer or two, and enjoy the show. Welcome, everybody, to Cold and Trash Horror Movie Grind. Today, we're going to have a real good time. I am your host with the most ready to boast. Ian is my name, and podcasting is my motherfucking game. Today, we, uh, that's all I got. I'm not very good with rapping on the spot. Hey, there we go. Um, Shut up. Shut your. Oh shit, my bad. But uh, yeah, today uh, we we got the one and only Petey Weistra, the devil's son-in-law. We've got the matrix. Let's get out of here. That's that's right. Um, yeah, I'm right. What's, what's up, man? We did straw. Well, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Why'd the song cut out, man? That's the best part. Did we yeah. Uh, but uh, Just pipe it in. Yeah, pipe, pipe in the song later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how are y'all doing? Uh, Excellent. La- last week we we did the. Uh, we started the black exploitation because we're, we're in uh, the middle of grind November, and so we're doing a bunch of different types of grindhouse exploitation type shit. And um, so we started with the black exploitation last week with Blackula. We're continuing the black exploitation this week with P.D. Weistra, the Devil's Son-in-Law, which is somewhat of a Dolomite film, uh, starring Rudy Ray Moore. Uh, who's of course famous for doing Dolomite films? Uh, he he started out as a stand-up comic who uh, he would talk and rhyme as this character Dolomite, and he he would he would tell a bunch of really crude humor, which back in the seventies what wasn't very common, and he had albums that were pretty much X-rated. And uh, and then he decided to make a movie, which was Dolomite, which was so super low budget that um, uh, it it I mean it, it was a black exploitation, really low budget, and but it developed a cult following. And then Rudy Ray Moore he decided he realized that that people were like laughing at how bad it's good. It's one of the first really so bad it's good films. Um, I would say, and so he he decided he realized this, and so he decided to to like make more of them, kind of bad on purpose, but it kind of it works and super low budget. So he did Human Tornado, and then after that, he did the movie that we're doing now. Now go and get tickets to Leroy and Skill. You damn record, I think we need to go. What, Petey, are you crazy? Don't you know what they'll do to you? I'm gonna give them an opening that they will never forget. Damn right. And so, yeah, that that brings us to here. Petey Weistra, the double son-in-law. He is not Dolomite exactly, but he basically is, because he talks in rhyme. (laughs) He he, he runs a club. Uh, but he, he's he's the exact same character. But uh, uh, anyway, today back from last week when we did Blackula, I got Ian Hannawalt and Daniel, uh, the guy with the Daniel with no last name. Uh, the same one. <laughs> uh, welcome back, guys. So, um, 
Is this your your first times wa- watching PD Weistra and uh, also wh- how well do you know Dolomite? Anybody can go first. Just jump in. It's a Mexican standoff. All brother. right, I'm gonna go. Uh, <laughs> Get out here. Get uh, out of here. It's <laughs> my first here. time watching. All right. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! The delay is crazy. Oh yeah. my god! All right, I'm having technical difficulties here. <laughs> um, so uh, this is not my first time watching this. Uh, I was introduced to this uh, particular movie through um, the movie "So Bad It's Good," cult classics, and Camp. Uh, and uh, I watched it probably about two years ago or so for the first time, um, shortly after watching Dolomite and. I had no idea that this existed, and I found it a whole lot more fun than the Dolomite movie. Mm. Um, it was just Rudy Ray Moore at his finest of knowing that he's cheesy and crazy, and uh, that he can make a bad movie. And uh, I, I really get the strong feeling that he did it deliberately, not underneath the Dolomite name, so as to not throw anybody off for the fact that he was going to be doing things his way, not the way that the studio told him to originally with uh, with Do- Dolomite. There's no studio. <laughs> um, it, it's, it, it's just him, himself, making uh, just just movies. Um, I I think that he he went with P.D. Wiestra because like I don't know. I I get it, it could have very well been, uh, you, you know, Dolomite, but um, now that there's no studio, like it's just I forgot him about that because I did I did watch making movies. Um, I did watch one of the documentaries made about him, and uh, I thought that was uh pretty interesting. But yeah, he was just making movies, um. I just, I felt like this actually made sense, even though he is playing the same character to call it a different character, just Uh because it's kind of a beginning into an end of that same character. Um, It goes, uh, it's almost like a multiverse sort of thing. He just goes off in this direction instead, but the same character. Um, But yeah, I really, uh, I really liked rewatching this this time um, with a lot more attention paid to to details. Uh, It was really yeah, it's one of my favorite black exploitation movies at this point. Uh, having rewatched, oh, uh, P.D. Wheatstraw specifically, or like Dolomite in general? No, P.D. Wheatstraw. Okay, see, I like the sequel to Dolomite, Human Tornado, the best. They're 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 all going to be very good, but I found this one to have elements that made it something special. I agree and with that. I just don't know that it would have. Um, I, I didn't feel like the the Dolomite trilogy really uh, did so much for me, you know, like in the mm. same way. I don't think I don't know if the Dolomite movies. I, I I actually didn't. I don't know. I think there was a third movie made. I didn't see it, but uh, Dolomite and Human Tornado. There, there was there was a Shane High Dolomite movie. I don't know, something like that. It came out in like ninety nine. Um, I didn't see that one. I don't think, but I I, I understood it was a trilogy, but the. The fun, the fun was in this one, so oh, well, uh, I don't want to do I mean, a full review, just how I liked it uh, right now. But yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think Human Tornado was a lot more fun, and then PD Weistra, they just kind of just did Human Tornado again, but brought the devil into it. But uh, anyway, uh, we we lost the other Ian, but uh, I, some technical difficulties, but he's back. Welcome back. Are are, are you here with us? I don't. All right, let's do let, let's do a little test, man. Let's do a little test. When I say H I, y'all say Y H I N Y. Oh, <laughs> did he that was really like pause? Eight, or is, 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 is this dude, like... I'm, I, there's something wrong oh, with my feet. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you, you I thought I literally that, that was, was like good. such an Ian joke. I was yeah, like, there's just a, there's a mega well, no, you, you still, no, here's the thing. You stood still. But and then you lagged, and that was that was, <laughs> was like, really good. Wait a minute. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we, we mostly have you here. Um, so let me yeah, ask you I'm gonna again. Try from my. Ooh. 
Yeah, you're 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 doing. Oh, we lost him. Yikes. Well, anyway, uh, back to where we were. Uh, let me let me show you. So here's the thing. I didn't know this until I was getting ready for this episode. But apparently, there was an old blues musician named Petey Reestraw, and he has a song that goes by the name of "Get Ready for It." The Devil's Son-in-Law. Uh, I'm I'm having technical. I had technical difficulties. I'm sorry, guys. Usually, I'm. Oh, oh no, no worries. Um. So anyway, yeah, I found I found that interesting. So, Ian, what what's your um introduction to Rudy Ray Moore? Is it P.D. Wistra? Is it Dolomite? Is it's it, the it's Canada? the Eddie Murphy. It's the Eddie Murphy movie. Gotcha. Yeah. The, the biopic. Well, no, no. I'll Bill take that back. I'll take that back. It was it was Mad TV. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm that glad was... you brought that up. Yeah. yeah. Mad TV did a sketch. Uh, they did. Arius Spears did a perfect Dolomite, and he was just like talking in rhyme. He's he's so such a better Dolomite than Eddie Murphy was. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I think Arius Spears should have been a Dolomite in the Netflix movie, but. Well, you know, he he's too like, like I don't know. He he's too much. You yeah, know? He, he did just recently get canceled for like some Cosby sketch he did with uh, Tiffany Haddish back in the day. Oh, did he? Something like that, or like you know. Well, what what I meant, good. like as far as acting goes, like he does a good parody. I don't think he he could like like Eddie Murphy is definitely a much better actor. He does a he does a really good a uh, really good Cosby impression too. I think that's what got him in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um Daniel, are 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 you from did you see the Eddie Murphy biopic on Netflix? I I have definitely seen a biopic. I don't remember exactly who was in it. I remember watching it during the pandemic, so it was uh it was like probably super it. late at night, um, in the middle of a lot of things and it was great. It's one of those things. This is actually one of those weird areas where um, my wife will join in with me to watch movies. She loves, loves, loves to see biopics of otherwise unwatchable style, you know, cult mm-hmm. classics uh, or campy things. She loves Ed Wood. She loves uh, My Name is Dolomite. Uh, yeah, things like that. She's absolutely into it. Just because the production value changes. And once you change the production value, she's back in. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah, so yeah, so um Eddie Murphy, he he did the biopic. He played Rudy Ray Moore playing Dolomite, and it's about the making of the movie Dolomite, which is the first one. And then but it has it has clips from a human tornado, which is the the sequel which i really love so after that they did pd we Strata double sun law which we did which is what this is about so uh would either of y'all like to say uh just hopefully in one sentence what pd we Strata, the double sun law is about yeah i got you right here uh so pd we Strata, uh is is born to a mom uh, of some unfortunate circumstances. Uh, he's born as a fully grown child uh, and is taught the ways of martial arts by a, uh, by a martial arts master, uh, but he chose the comedic path instead. Fast forward 30 yes, years, is. and he's playing for a crowd. Uh, I don't know. It, it, eventually... He meets the devil. Do we get that far in the synopsis? Or are, are we going? Are we going full synopsis? Or just yeah? Tag? Hopefully, hopefully in one sentence. Like I said, that's tough, man. It's really tough because halfway through this movie, they introduce the devil as a they character. Keep, yeah, the plot keeps changing. The plot changes like yeah. four times. But I, I'd rather focus <laughs> on on Leroy and Skillet because I think they were a pretty pretty much an amalgamation of various early vaudeville characters, uh, and even even a like Amos and Andy. Uh, early, early, because that's what they were. They were like a duo comedic troupe. But the whole movie yeah. was shitting on them. They are the they are the bad guy, right? They're the one right. doing shit, like try, trying to please Mister White, uh, aptly named uh, financier <laughs> of the villains. Um, right. And uh, and and then you know by the end they get their comeuppance. 
but I think it's cool how they kind of they, they look at the way that they uh, present themselves and they're like, oh, yeah, fuck those guys. And then Rudy Ray Moore and his gang are just fucking badass and, and, and say what they want to say and do what they want to do. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, Re Leroy and Skillet, they're, they're like, like an Abbott and Costello kind of. But yeah, it's basically, so they exist. So I don't know. It's not something about them, like PD Weestraw, he, he's playing like the same club or something. So they want to like kill him. And they he do. He has they a show hire... competing with their, their, it's a very complicated story. Like the white dude gives them a hundred thousand dollars to open up a comedy club. And he says, but there are, there are going to be, uh, have competition. You know, he, they say, no, 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 not at all. Then they realize that Petey Wheatstraw has got a show two days later. They say, Petey, don't do the show. He says, fuck y'all. Petey does what he wants. Right. Uh, yeah. Cause he's really Dolomite. <laughs> yeah. yeah cause Dolomite as Petey Wheatstraw or, or the other way around. Rudy yeah. Ray Moore as Dolomite as Petey Wheatstraw. <laughs> as Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, like, uh, he rhymes just like them. Like there's a whole scene where like some, some kids are like jacking his car. Like, uh, uh, he just starts rhyming. <laughs> if you don't let me pass, I'm about to put this foot in your motherfucking ass. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, you, yeah, you got it. So, uh, what do you guys think? Like, hell, hell no, I'm still going to play at this club. So, so they like send their, their, their homeboy Scarface to like murder them, but they murder a child. He instead. And then at the child's funeral, they just like murder everybody. And then Petey Weistrow goes to hell. And the devil's like, hey, I'll bring you back to life. Like nothing ever happened. You get your revenge and everything. Plus, I'll give you this magical pimp cane on top. The only catch is you have to marry my <laughs> daughter. And so he's like, okay, I'm deal. Say, what's your daughter look like, by the way? And he shows him a picture. He's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> But does the audience see the picture? No, we don't. We don't. We don't see what she looks like until the very, one of the very, one of the best very, reveals of all time. One of the best, like, because they keep <laughs> they keep amping it up, and I'm like, is it going to be? Is she even going to be ugly? Like, is she going to be like attractive? Is it going to oh, be the devil? Clearly. The devil yeah. himself? You know, is it going to open it up and it's it's the devil with the beard and stuff? Mm -hmm. uh, it was neither of those things. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, so but he says he'll do it, and and so the devil goes good on his promise, and uh, he brings Petey Weistraw back. He reverses time, and everybody like like goes back to like living, but um, and, and then he Rudy has or uh PD has the uh, magic pimp cane which he does uh, the Bruce Almighty thing by like making Leroy and Skillet like fucking say things that they didn't mean to I wonder if Bruce Almighty took that from this movie yeah put, putting words in other people's mouths through psychic action Daniel you ever done any of that No, what are you talking about, Ian? <laughs> PD can't, or Daniel can't even fucking put his own words through his own mouth. <laughs> it's just such a disarming question. Like, what, what the hell are you talking about, dude? No. I was, I was just trying to include you in the conversation. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, anyway, so, so PD, like, kind of, but he, he goes back on his deal and he's just like, We'll, we'll trick the devil by like disguising a why knows me, and then I'll just go to another state. Oh God, he won't find me. <laughs> the Where's devil it? has no idea how to cross state boundaries. That's something I learned <laughs> from this movie. Like, just run. Yeah, run. That, like he that, showed up in your closet, but just run. It's cool. And, like, here's the thing. So, like, he has all of his friends like helping him out, doing all the work, and then he just like goes into an orgy. It just fucks all these women, all these demon women. Oh, the devil gave him that. The, the, yeah, and, and, I I know the devil gave him that, but he's like doing that while he has all this. Also, friends, like, like it, yeah, if the devil's him. if the devil's into that, like, don't you think Rudy Ray Moore could have been like, hey man, can I just keep the 
doing this when I'm married to your daughter, or like what is well, that? He's, not that he's the devil. No, it's a bachelor party. It's only one night. So, it but goes, he's, right? he's the devil. Life's a bachelor party. Come on. Life's a bachelor party. No, yeah. he said specifically he didn't do that himself, but he would have liked to. That was something weird that the devil said that I didn't really understand, but. Oh, you know. I missed that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Lou said he did not have the same experience himself of getting to have a demon lady orgy, I guess. And uh, huh. that's that's not how his life went. So, which, while, however, he ended up having his daughter. Uh, yeah, you know that begs the cool. question: who is the who is the daughter? Uh, uh, who's who's the, who's the who's uh who's Rudy Ray Moore's mother-in-law in this movie? Oh yeah. my god, that's a great sequel. Are we doing Pers- sequels Persephone? later? Can we do? Uh, uh, oh no, Stars, but I, uh, I, I got mine. I, I, devilish mother-in-law, because I would yeah. totally watch that. <laughs> <laughs> the devil, dude, the devil's mother-in-law, Rudy Ray, and it's Rudy Ray Moore's uh, or Petey Wheatstraw's grandmother. <laughs> it, it's just Queen B, probably. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so but what I'm saying is he has his orgy while his friends are like trying to like protect him and like save him. They do all the work while he's just fucking all these bitches. And and then like he doesn't even like leave. He he just like goes into the next room. You know? And uh yeah, it, it it's kinda it's kind of like a mess. Like Oh, the whole movie, yeah, it's very hard to explain the plot. This like, is, a, like, yeah, this, this is the, probably the hardest movie we, we've had on this show. I call this, I call this plot vomit. It's, you know, <laughs> it's just every single There's... scene, like, you're just like, what the fuck? Why'd that kid get shot? Yeah, because, like, it, it's one yeah. thing to, like, change the story and the plot while you're writing the script. It's another thing to change it during the movie. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that that's really gotta like every ten minutes. It, like you can't exactly explain it because it's like, man, it's just a ride. the The plot is where it's going, not where it is. I I feel so like it just happens. I, I feel like a, so, somebody like else, like like they gave like fifteen people like five minutes to write a script, and then they just <laughs> put it all together. Whoosh. <laughs> because it, it's it starts with him being born, which is crazy right there. Because yeah, can, like, can we just can we just acknowledge the giant size of the belly and how it was completely like like it was like a giant pillow comforter. His twin wrap. brother was a watermelon. He, yeah, he did. He was born after a watermelon. Okay, we're we gonna talk about watermelons because we're gonna talk about watermelons. This is gonna all right. It's this gonna movie, come up later anyways. So this we'll movie was start. fucking very liberal with the, with their use of watermelons <laughs> uh, in a way that would not fly in 2022. Uh, I don't think it flew then. I, like. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that too. Uh, it had more watermelons than watermelon. Man. All right, so what do you? Okay, let's go around in a circle. Uh, most obnoxious or racist or whatever you want use of watermelons in in this movie. Uh, Ian, what would you think? That right there, like she gave birth to a she gave a birth to a watermelon. She gave birth to a watermelon within the first three minutes of the movie. Daniel, you agree? <laughs> Not yeah, even for, yeah, no, I'd, I'd just... say first minute of the what's movie. What's the most what's the most outrageous racist watermelon scene in PD Weech draw? That's it. That's that, I mean that's it. And the the crazy thing about it was that it wasn't just racist um as far as this depiction of black people but also the jewish doctor that was there at that time was just like another level of like oh my god i I, I, like he didn't and and that actor was in human tornado as a racist was he was he actually jewish though and was he supposed to be jewish Jewish. in the movie yes how do you know jewish in the movie Dude, he, he, he so. they they offered to pay him at the end, and he denied it. That I don't think that's how they would depict Jews in the seventies. You know what I mean? He was like, "No, no, don't pay me," and I was like, "Oh, huh? That's is that was that a purposeful joke? Was that like a shut up, Mister?" <laughs> this is this is one of the problems with black exploitation is that at a certain point you just leave to go like, <sighs> "Oh, well, well, I mean, that, this is very this is very much a parody." We- and, it, <laughs> and it's definitely by black people making fun of themselves. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and uh, they, they like really ran with it. 
Yeah, um, I mean, we have, no, we've no. got Mr. White, the most racist whitey that there was in it, uh, is called Mr. White. It's, oh, I couldn't, uh, it, I couldn't wait awesome. to see him. I love I it. Couldn't, I couldn't wait to see him get fucking flamed. And I'm sure, like, the, you know, I'm, and I'm watching it. I'm imagining myself in the crowd in, like, 77, where this is the only time you're going to see it. It's not going to come out on VHS for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you see it while it's live, and you're in a crowd, and you're, and you're surrounded, and you, and you, and you have a, a, a black hero taking down the white villain. And then, and then you know, I, I, I would I would hope there'd be some you know some cheers you know and you'd, you'd feel that 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 presence that energy like I think I think that that was probably a really uh really uh good experience you know yeah but um but no you guys are both wrong the most racist scene with a watermelon in this movie uh <laughs> your smile your smile went away so quick Daniel uh uh there, I have to say this I just have to say it because it's, it it is what it is um. Do y'all remember the scene where they're they're sitting on the front stoop and they're eating they're eating watermelon the yeah. the, the older brother I assume and, and the the younger brother yeah and, right, uh, right and the, and hey, it, he's talking about like you you need to like start going to school if you want to be a basketball player it, yeah no he says like I'm gonna no you need to start going to school he says I'm I don't need to go to school I'm gonna be a basketball player and then he shoots the watermelon rind like a basketball yeah. Like, that is fucking next level shit in the fucking seventies. You know what I mean? Whereas like, but it's not really smart humor. It's not like fucking. No, I don't know. not at all. It, it, uh, it, so I saw this movie for the first time in the theater at Alamo draft house. Oh, really? Oh, cool. It was a, it was a midnight screening. Um, yeah. And dude, the audience laughed so hard during this entire movie. It was fucking ridiculous. Um, it's a hilarious movie. Yeah. It's terrible. Uh, so when we see them eating watermelon, dude, everybody just started just fucking started laughing. Like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so it's such a it's a guilty. You shouldn't laugh at that. That's wrong. Well, you know what I mean. Twenty twenty two. One hundred percent. One of those things that you want to look away, but like. You're, you know full well that we're we're, it. we're laughing because yeah. it's so bad. It's I so get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I I get it. I get it. I totally get it. It's just yeah. like damn, damn, Rudy Ray Moore. You really you, like because we did Blackula last week, and Blackula didn't go that far. <laughs> they never. You know what no. I mean? No. This is a, this is a very different movie. movie yeah. Than Blackula, in, in which this is more like a pair. Like th this is Rudy Ray Moore like realizing like people enjoy making fun of bad movies so he made a bad movie on purpose and unlike other people who make a bad movie on purpose he succeeded because it's like <laughs> it's still bad <laughs> like it's legitimately unironically bad while despite, despite all of his efforts bad. to be a parody he's still making a bad movie without realizing how bad it is yeah <laughs> While trying to make a bad movie on purpose, so like it, it, it like really is special. Oh, we lost Ian again. Um, what I do think is neat on this, and uh, I just I, I gotta give a little bit of a shout out to to the channel that we're on. Uh, this is still got horror movie roots, and I appreciate that a lot. I find um, the scenes where they decide that that's what they want to go with to be really fun and cool when. Um, uh, when Petey goes ahead and he starts dismantling the club using his uh, using his uh, devil's cane, that uh -huh. is like supposed to be like a horror moment, and it totally shifts focus from what he was doing before, which was just making people look bad and um, upsetting, um, yeah, you know, upsetting their their patrons. To then, well. No, I need to legitimately scare people. I'm going to tear apart the club, and people are going to be running for their lives and screaming, and all like it's actually got some of that going on too. And I think that's a neat thing that this movie does. Is just, well, it goes all over the place, like you had mentioned before. Mm -hmm. There's literally 20 plots that happen, not all at the same time, but in quick succession of each other. So it's not a complex movie; it just doesn't stay on target. And uh, right. I think that that's. Actually, it's some of the charm of the movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Um, what, what, what else? How do y'all feel about the soundtrack, the music to this movie? Uh, 
That's a jam. Yeah. It's not as yeah, good no, as Black. Black. The is very good. It's not no, as good as Because Black Hula had an actual band. Uh, Petey Weistra did not. Did y'all notice how, how bad the sound mixing was for the live performance? Like, they cut to the trumpets, and all you could hear were the, were the trumpets and it's the drums. Not as bad as Dolomite was, but yeah. Yeah, no, um, I didn't notice it as much. I, I Honestly, there's so much that was so bad in this movie that, like, the little details are very hard to grasp on. Um, I always felt that there was something a little bit more distracting than whatever's on the screen at any given point in this movie. Right. Damn. His, his connection sucks. <laughs> oh, well. Um, here he is. Uh, welcome back. So, I, I would like to bring up something that I, I really like about this movie is is the making the old trope of making a deal with the devil, which goes back to like Dr. Faustus. Are either of you familiar with Dr. Faustus? Mm -hmm. Daniel, yes, my man. T tell us about Dr. Faustus. I, I want to go straight back to the movie, though, on this one, because my favorite part about what he does as far as uh, making a deal with the devil is he immediately just bails. His plan in the start is to bail, and the devil should know that, but he's just immediately like, you know what? No. I'm just going to do my thing, and I'm just going to run away from the whole, the whole deal of the devil. I'm not going to get in any trouble. And then when he does get in trouble, his idea is like, I'm just going to cross the state boundary. The devil can't find me there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it drives me crazy how just just how again avoiding the plot of the movie he just avoids the plot of the movie like yeah yeah we've got this movie going but like let's go back to the revenge thing let's do this instead this is the new plot of the movie again is basically right, go, going back to a previous plot <laughs> but I, enough I, of that one we're done we're going back here so, okay, right fine. well dr faustus for those who aren't aware are, is uh, an, a very old story from like hundreds of years ago. Uh, it, it's it, it's like the five or six hundreds, something like that, um, six or seventh century, and uh, it, so it, it's a it's about this uh, this important rich man, Doctor Faustus. He makes a deal with the devil that like. Anything could be his. Like he could just make anything happen, and all the riches, all the poontain, everything he wants is his. And uh, but there's a price, which is his soul. So he signs the thing, and then uh, at the end of the movie, the devil collects his soul. And so we've seen this countless times. Like Futurama has done it. Uh, Petey Wheatstraw has done it. Uh, so so many other. I mean, it, it, it's it's really classic. Uh, so I I I really I I love that the whole thing of like making a deal with the devil. Uh, but then put a nice little spin on it instead of like his soul is he uh has to marry the devil's daughter, which still is basically given in the soul. Ian, let's let's not split hairs here. He is giving the devil his dick, which is basically <laughs> his black man's soul. Right. That's. I think that's my favorite part of this. Is it takes something that's supposed to be so. Um, oh man, this is going to end up sounding terrible. It takes something so large and so important <laughs> to a person, and uh, it makes fun of it in in the light of the seventies black exploitation thing, which is that instead of having to give up. Um, and be eternally damned. I feel like he's got to sleep with an ugly woman. Because <laughs> God, God help him. God help him for having to sleep with an ugly woman. He hey might man, as let's be, well be. Let's be real. Still. Let's be real. She was way uglier than than you thought she was going to be. That is, that is true. That At is the true. reveal, like they went they went hard on the ugly uh, special effects. Like, what was y'all? Did y'all have a favorite special effect from this? Uh, this film, I mean, oh, I know I did. Um, it was just like things just it, appeared so. or disappeared, and you hear the boing sound. 
Oh, like when the poor family is driving along in their broken down car. And it, yeah, and it, yeah. And there's a whole stops. montage of of uh, Petey just like walking down the street. Just like that's the most feel face. good. That's the most feel good part of this this movie is is Petey Weedraw like using the devil's power shit. to do good, and the <laughs> devil calls him and says, "But what the fuck, Petey? Why why are you helping out?" He's doing that is so great. I love that he <laughs> punishes a kid by combing his hair. Oh yeah, He's what the like, fuck? Is that? Oh, okay, that okay, okay, okay. All right, let's stop right now because that is the most – out of all the controversial shit in this movie, that has to be the most controversial scene because that kid that kid is crying legitimate tears, and he's like four. And, and, and they, they just like focus on it. Like, yeah. For like a solid <laughs> minute. It's just like it is literally, close It up. is literally like the, the, the modern definition of, of, of a form of child abu- abuse. Yeah, and, 100%. And, I'm certain that that child was suffering. There's no way a kid the can Yeah. That. It comes, yeah, it's yeah. like pulling on his hair. Like, and I guess maybe that's some some cultural rite of passage that I'm not familiar with personally, you know. But like, don't know that. <laughs> that that's not even going to touch on And it wasn't that, even the kid. It wasn't like the reason I why wasn't. I did it, hey, hey re- I wasn't a black man in the 1970s. I don't know what the norms were. You know what I mean? But like, here, like, here's the thing: it is that that's not the kid that that ran into the street because what happened was. They were playing, and their ball went to the street, and one kid ran into the street, almost got hit by a car to retrieve his ball. And then Petey, like, grabbed him and brought him to safety. He was like, you know what? Just because you did that, I'm going to cut your hair. And he started doing that, but then he let that kid go and grabbed another kid and then (laughs) really started coming his. And that's the kid that started crying. Yeah, yeah, I that was a terrible moment on set for that child. I'm sure yeah. that was not like I. That's I not what ever happened. To that kid. He literally, literally, the kid that was supposed to be put through that ran away, so he just grabbed another <laughs> one. Rudy Ray Moore did not. Petey Wheatstraw. Rudy so, Ray Moore so, is just like, oh, man, we got to. Well, what am I gonna do? I'm not taking another scene. We're gonna get this all right, guy. There's one time. thing. Yeah, right. there's one thing we're not taking into consideration. Like they're not recording on digital. They're recording on film, and film is expensive. Yeah. And yeah every. I, Second of recording, like you have to keep that that cut going, if if, if budget is is an issue, you this know. This is where the idea of doing um all of this like impromptu sort of I, there's a word for impromptu when you're doing it in a movie, but um where people just did whatever and then they kept it, uh like yeah. they just ad lib something or they just make it go like oh well, this like, is better than what we wanted. Like it's well, like a stream of consciousness movie. movie. Yeah, uh, you, know? you you want to hear a fun fact about that kid? Yes. <laughs> I saw. I I can't. I hope I notice. And the credits. He is credited. He's in. He the played credits. both. He played a young uh, Petey Wheatstraw too. I don't know about that. I don't think so. Oh, I thought he. But, I thought it was the same kid. Damn it! Is no, it not? It, Fuck! It's, it's not. I should have said that then. My bad. Take but, that part out. Because that, that's somebody <laughs> else in the credits. I thought they were the same kid. I'm sorry. Take that part out. I don't want. <laughs> it's it's unedited, it. man. You can't do that. It's okay. Damn it. Uh, however. I noticed that this kid, his last name is Lynch, which uh, Rudy Ray Moore's friend, who's in all of his movies, is Jimmy Lynch. Oh, so, is it Jimmy Lynch's you think it's his son? Kid? Yeah, he he like his friend who helps him out in every movie. It's his, it was his son, so he was just and like, dude, okay, use my son. Okay, <laughs> I get he it. That makes sense. his buddy's son on camera because that's awesome. <laughs> That's not the first time he's he's brushed his hair. I bet it, I, it was I, probably like just constantly just like I hate this fucking kid with his nappy hair. <laughs> There's a lot oh, about like, this movie uh, movie scene that I really like, though. I really like that. Basically, he used the cane as part of his stopping thing, but basically all he did was run in front of the car and go, "Hey, stop." And the car just like slowed. It was going from like five miles down to two miles per hour. And then he got the kid out of the way. Like the kid was not in danger. There was no <laughs> that he was gonna get hit. But it's like I, I don't. I know that he's got his his magic pimp cane, but I don't believe that that was what he did there. And the devil was super mad. He's like, "That was mine. I was supposed to kill him. You yeah. stay off my turf." Uh, and, and also, <laughs> let's not forget that there was a woman that was so fat she got stuck in a chair. <laughs> Oh no. And then he just used his his powers to take 20 
two hundred pounds off of her. <laughs> twenty two hundred pounds, Jesus! That lady was having a great time though. She was dancing originally. Then when she sat down, she got stuck in the chair. Yeah, I didn't are, are understand about... that scene at all. And then they got like a, so a really skinny chick to replace her. She was all happy. Oh my god! <laughs> she, she went from she went from what's eating Gilbert great to so, some something less something thinner than that. <laughs> <laughs> shut up shut your ugly old time ancient ass up i can't be on all the time rudy all right <laughs> jesus christ let me give me give me a second to warm up I, i'm having technical difficulties tonight i'm i'm look i'm on my fucking phone <laughs> so that that's the scene let, let me play the scene one more time shut up shut your ugly old time ancient ass up yeah uh, so that that's the beginning. So all right. So that's what I was saying at the, earlier. Is that there's there's like every five minutes there's a new story, a new script, basically. Yeah. It, start, it starts with him being Even mind, this started this started with him being trained in martial arts. Yeah. In a in a, in a karate <laughs> kid way. Eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's like ten years before child. the karate kid came out. Yeah. And, and and then he like learns nothing from it. And you know. And- he becomes a he turns into Dolomite basically, and he's on stage and he's just <laughs> roasting the crowd. If you watch the movie Human Tornado, that hey. movie starts out exactly the same way, which is him doing stand up, roasting the crowd, insulting people, which he did in this movie. But dude, as someone who's seen the the Eddie Murphy uh, biopic, uh, I gotta say, Rudy Ray, Eddie Murphy does not do Rudy Ray Moore's physique justice. Like no. Rudy Ray Moore is in much better shape than Eddie Murphy was when he did that movie, uh, and I feel like they played it up in the in the in the Eddie Murphy movie. Like Rudy Ray Moore has he's kind of cut, dude. I gotta be. No, I, I gotta not, be real not dude. really. No, I I I, just I got some that. arms going, dude. I mean, I'm telling you, like look at like look at uh, that 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 scene where he he chases down the dudes that stole his back seat and his yeah. and one tire. Y'all remember that chase scene? That's a great chase scene. Just, yeah, this movie just this movie throws is all everything. over the place. I, I really appreciate. So, so, so is this podcast. I'm trying to focus on like one scene and and like you know keep changing the subject. So anyway, he's he's doing stand up and uh, and then he just starts roasting the crowd, he, uh, which he did in Human Tornado. Like Human Tornado starts out with him just doing stand up and he starts making fun of the crowd and. Uh, and uh, he he's just like you're so fat something something I, I don't remember but in this one he says you're so your ass is so fat that if there was a fire they said you, everybody had to haul ass you'd have to make four trips <laughs> great roast I and, believe it was I, I believe it was ten trips yeah, okay ten trips and, and then yeah. her husband is like you can't talk to my wife this way and then he said shut up Shut your ugly old time ancient ass up. And, uh, and can we see and, the husband? Can we see the husband or the wife? I, I don't have that clip. Okay, just imagine but, like two unattractive individuals. Yeah, and, and uh, so it, it was. It was that was pretty much it in this movie. And Human Tornado is a lot worse. He he fucking talks so much more shit than Human Tornado. He's I gotta see. I like, gotta see it. Oh, like uh, yeah. He sees another fat woman, and he says, "You got the same thing those skinny girls got, but a damn sight more of it." <laughs> and, right. and then he sees, he's, he sees a fat guy, and he says, "When you have sex with the ladies, you say you may not know I'm in there, but you damn sure know I'm on there." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. What about what? What about when he was saying like uh, it, it was either him or another character was saying like uh, you know you know you're a sinner if you turn around and look at your uh, oh yeah uh, toilet paper after your wife yeah that was somebody uh, yeah that was a club owner, or not not club owner but it was like somebody who was like saying yeah it's like there's two types of people so, some people who take a shit and then walk away and then some people who take a shit and then look at their shit yeah and that was he- an entire scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, he did, he, but, but he did a little movement and a sound effect for, for the shit. Go, 
he goes, sometimes yeah, he you did. take a shit and you go, and then, <laughs> and then you walk away. But other times you take a shit, a sinner will take a shit and go, and look at the shit. And it's because he's got sin. <laughs> it was like, okay. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. No, I agree. Personally, personally, I agree. I bet like, that well, wasn't even in the script. I bet they just like got that guy. No, okay, <laughs> He's so, so ad living. Do you guys look at your shit after you take it? Sometimes. Or do you guys just flush and walk away? Every time. Uh, I'll, I'll say what do you, seven, what do you, what do you, what do you Come on, what are you doing? Checking for worms? What, you, got, you got sin inside you? Come on. I'm worried about the sin coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I just sin and walk away, man. You know? Uh... So, so, I so sometimes, hold on, Daniel. Sometimes oh, yeah. I'll look at it and I'll, yeah. Uh, that's so, yeah, Saturday for me. So, sometimes I look back and, and that's my reaction. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I see Ian has turned into a dolphin. <laughs> what of it? <laughs> what of it? Uh, the, you should make that your Facebook profile picture. <laughs> All right. Uh, what would Petey Wheatstraw do if confronted by a dolphin? Shut up. Shut your ugly old time ancient ass up. Come on, man. You don't do that. Oh, what? no, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. I'm about to play a clip. And then you'll see his face. And then that face will be his reaction to a dolphin. We've got to make it. Let's get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) That is a great scene. Those demons, the 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 the, okay. All right. Back up. Wardrobe. Wardrobe on this movie. (laughs) Time out. <laughs> that okay, that I'm calling is tech- clearly where all the budget went. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Petey is sound in- effects. That's for sure. No, not yeah, the sound effects. Sound effect. And not not the demon wardrobe. The demons were given leotards and capes. <laughs> That's what I know. What demon looks like? I have seen that movie yeah. plenty of times. <laughs> it's definitely a demon. Come no, on. but Petey Petey shows up in a different outfit in every scene, and they're all flashy. There are there are like at least fifteen different outfits from Petey Weechstra in this. In this oh, oh, the outfit. Yeah. The, okay. I thought you were talking about the demon leotards. Uh, no, both, yeah. both. They, they yeah, spent no. all the money on Petey Weechstra's yeah, outfits, his, and so they his, couldn't afford it on the demons. His yeah, his outfits were fucking fly. Like yeah, he looked fucking bomb, dude. He you, he used this budget to buy his own like wardrobe. Yeah, and every every scene he had a different suit on. <laughs> well, so that's actually, and they um, were all like, "I want that fucking suit." Yeah. I was I was thinking really hard about this that if Pity Wheatstraw was a video game and there was a piece of DLC that was had an exclusive um one exclusive outfit, which is the outfit that would make you shell out your five extra bucks in addition to having already purchased the game. Just to be able to play as Petey Wheatstraw out there. Uh, do you have a specific outfit? Uh, it's the one where he has the the big leather hat that looks like a fucking. He's like a paper boy in the nineteen twenties. But it's but I it's know really what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's like a, a yellow and black like plaid fucking like buttoned up shirt or something. He's wearing with it. Obviously, that's the one that stuck out to most of me because it's the only one I can remember that vividly. What about you, Ian? If you if you had to spend five dollars on a on a DLC in some in like if you want to play as oh. Pete Weestraw in Fortnite, like what outfit would you want him to be wearing? Dude, that that black and red one that he had, that was so sweet. <laughs> what scene? What scene? Um. It was like near the end. It was. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Was it like a, leather? Was there leather it, involved? It, no, it wasn't leather. It was like the jacket was black, but the, the inside, like the the collar, was red. Yeah, and, dude, that is that was a good that was yeah. a good outfit. Did he have a hat? Did he? Was he wearing a hat? 
I don't think so. Let me go back to the scene I played earlier. He he might be wearing it. I don't remember, but see what he yeah, see. We've got the matrix. Let's get out of here. No, that's not it. No, that's one of like fifteen that, different outfits. That was <laughs> fucking dope, though. That was a that, very nice pinstripe no, fucking all suit. Great. That, and, that and might have been the most was, understated outfit of, when of the he whole was movie. At the though. funeral, he had a fucking badass pinstripe suit there too. When he oh was yeah, at the funeral. He was like, "Hey, can we talk about? Can we talk about the funeral murdering scene? The the whole yeah, the mass was, the mass casualty event? Let's talk about it." Um. All right. Like, were, were they all supposed to be dead? Because there was that one girl whose eye, eyes were just open and she was just boredly blinking. I think that that was a bad actress. <laughs> <laughs> okay no no is it dolomite cannon that she's a bad actress or did she just survive and she was just like sad and kind of I, in shock think, laying on her dead relatives i think everybody who had anything to do with any movie that rudy ray bar had anything <laughs> to do with was a bad movie and that's including <laughs> big money hustlers oh yeah icp yeah. what's up because Rudy Ray Moore reprised his role as Dolomite for the final time in Big Money Hustlers. The yeah, like that was actually Boston him. Movie. That yeah. was actually him. Yes, I didn't know that was actually him. Yes, damn. They got Rudy Ray Moore to reprise his Dolomite. Fucking and, for for a straight to DVD release off on on fucking yes. Stupid Path Records or what was it was called the it's fucking stupid. Juggalos, man. Yeah. Yeah, they got they got fucking Dolomite himself, and that's the last movie he was ever in. That makes sense, dude. I I, I think I think I see, I think Insane Clown Posse is a band that was so ridiculed for so long, but really they were fucking Andy Kaufman. they were being in the Andy Kaufman of like weird rap because they were just like, yeah, no, none of this shit is real. We said magnets are fake, haha, <laughs> and it got fucking an SNL sketch. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, um, you know it's funny. We we were talking about this just last night on uh, on the other infamous horror show, uh, Reviews from Hell. We were actually just talking about this. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. ICP. I I forgot what I was about to say, but. Um, I totally forgot what I was about to say just now. It's cool, man. I, I just, okay. uh, I've, I've got a, I've got a quick interlude. I do have a, I had a reason that I wanted to ask you guys that, uh, that particular prompt. Uh, my question was because, um, you go first, then Ian. <laughs> I don't yeah. want you to lose it. Well, I, I was gonna say, uh, we gotta talk about PD. We, I mean, no, Rudy Ray Boer, uh, his influence on the rapper community because. Oh, well. Well, where did Little Wayne get his name? <laughs> yes, there is a scene in this movie where there's some graffiti that says Little Wayne, and this is in the seventies. Little Wayne wasn't even born yet. Yeah, but his mama <laughs> was. Where do you think his mama? Little Wayne didn't decide his own name. Okay, Birdman <laughs> did. And when was when was Birdman born? You think Birdman wasn't watching fucking Rudy Ray Moore movies? Birdman that, watched it all. I'm from New Orleans, dog. Is that true? Yeah. Man, they need Birdman, to put dude. more respect on his name. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and, and and you know what? Kiss your kids because we're something like our daddies out here. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there is a scene where they we just see some random graffiti and it says Lil Wayne. Like, that's so fucking <laughs> funny. Was this filmed in New Orleans? No, it was like California. Yeah, yeah, you can see it on the, the license plates. Ah, uh, yeah, but... the New Orleans of the West. <laughs> New Orleans of the West. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, anyway. Uh, but, yeah, the the, ra the rapper community, I mean, uh, Snoop Dogg above everybody else, um, they, they fuck, I mean, there would be no rap without Rudy Ray Moore because before rap was a music genre, Rudy Ray Moore would go on stage as a comedian and talk and rhyme, and and that had never been done before, and it's like people fucking loved it. They ate it up. He he, like he had he had a whole thing about like 
the like lions and monkeys, the signifying monkey, which goes way down in the jungle deep. The lion stepped on the signifying monkey's feet. The monkey said, motherfucker, can't you see? You're standing on my goddamn feet. And the lion said, motherfucker, like, I didn't hear a word you said, but if you talk one more, I'll beat your head or something like that. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, so he's like talking rhyme, and so that was like really influential on the kids, which grew into like the 80s and 90s rappers like Snoop Dogg and like uh, well, okay, Re- okay, Re- Ray Moore, like famously said he was through with it before they knew what to do with it. I think, I think if we're talking about hip hop culture and Dolomite. Uh, and Rudy Ray Moore in general, I think we, we also have to keep in mind that, like, Dolomite was a reflection of the times as far as, like, pimp culture goes, right? Yeah. Like, Dolomite didn't introduce the pimp hat to the pimps. The pimps introduced the pimp hat to Dolomite. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, Dolomite was a character that was a pimp that Rudy Ray Moore definitely was not. But, uh, yeah, you, you're right. It, it's... Um, he he was portraying this character that was a pimp that like based on the people that were around him. Yeah, exactly. So in yeah. the same way that art imitates life, Rudy Ray Moore imitated the pimps around. It was a character. You like like you mentioned earlier, right? Right. Oh yeah. Um and and, and then yeah, like lots of black exploitation flicks like Superfly and the Mac. Uh, Dolomite really influenced rappers, like especially '90s rappers, because they were they were kids when these movies came out, and uh, especially the West Coast rappers uh, from like uh, Compton, LA, and San Francisco, which uh, I, I think I think Rudy Ray Moore was in Francis San Francisco or maybe LA. But uh, yeah, he, he had a big influence on them, and so like I I can uh, show you right here is uh, the rest in peace, old dirty bastard. He he did a a dolomite thing. Uh, a man, a man which we all love so very much. This man have done more for the blacks than anyone. The man. Yeah, so. We, we we can see see from there that uh, the influence that Rudy Ray Moore had on the hip hop community. Uh, Daniel, yeah. what, what do you think about that? I mean, it's it's definitely something I didn't think about before. Um, it, it's incredibly clear if you take a look at that. Uh, the that's where they were getting their inspiration from, uh, but. Uh, it's just not something I thought about before, but it does make sense because when you listen to some of the uh, older black exploitation movies like uh, Dolomite and uh, Human Tornado and things like that, you do hear somebody doing um, the the joke version of it, but they're dissing people while they're joking and they're talking great shit about themselves, which is uh, the little bit of the start where they which you know like battle rap, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I mean, before, like, I can I can believe it. I just I didn't know anything about it before. So I'm before caught up rap was a genre of music back in the se- like yeah mid to late seventies and eighties. Uh, before it was a music genre, it was like a thing that people would do, like it like <laughs> inner city L.A., San Francisco, New York. Uh, people would like um, there. Like in urban areas, that they would like get together and they would talk in rhyme, and they called it rapping. They were like, like Dolomite <laughs> would say, uh, "Dolomite is my name, and rapping and tapping is my game." Because like what they would do is like, "Hey, what?" Like in the movie The Mac, which is a seventies movie, people like people would go up and hey, let's let's rap about something. Rap me- means like talking like fast and with rhythm and, and with rhyme and so that that was just like a way that it was like a really cool way 
that people in urban areas would like talk to each other and then it became a music genre after that this has been a great history lesson from ian webb uh white man (laughs) yeah yeah no no i I mean i I legitimately have never heard that before uh it's interesting it makes sense i mean in the same way that we come up with new words uh you know and work with etymology on that it's uh it's not surprising that um the the different ways in which we speak come from uh come from films or come from um the ways in which certain people do certain things so it's interesting yeah yeah very very interesting uh yeah it, it's really cool i wouldn't okay okay here's here's where i'm gonna push back on you a little bit uh ian um so I, I feel like you're kind of over amplifying Rudy Ray Moore's uh, re- real influence on rap in, in a way, like it, it, cause it's very much a part of multiple other things. I think if you took the whole pie and you, you're, you're going to include, you know, like uh, keyboards in the Bronx in the late seventies and you know, did, was yeah. Grandmaster Flash influenced by Dolomite? I don't know. Oh Maybe. yeah, prob- probably not. But like the 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 rhyme scheme, though, very much was right. I I just don't think that's so much Dolomite. He I guess all right, all right. He popularized Grand, Grandmaster it. Flash go, goes back to like break dancing. Which uh, w- w- it would be one of the five pillars of hip hop. Yeah, uh, w- which which started out as a lot in, in New York. They hated disco, so there was there was a, a DJ in a club that would take the break in a song and extend it, and then people would start. It, 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 like he would play like a disco. These a, are a pop- the breaks. Yeah, he would play a popular. Uh, disco song and extend the break to for like ten minutes and people would dance during the break and it would be turned so into saying, okay yeah break dancing and, and, then, and, then, and then people got bored with the dancing and they were like let's rap over it too like yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say rhymes it, exactly and just, then just that, like that's Moore. that's where Dolomite comes in like yeah people were influenced by Dolomite talking in a rhyme and so the you take the two things to and put them together there, there's the extension of the breaks and the break dancing and then there at which grandmaster flash uh perfected at with, with the djing and, and the turning of the tables and then <laughs> and, and and then you've got the dolomite with the talking and rhyme and then they merge them together to create something new which is uh, the rhyming over the beat. Well, this has been another great episode of Movies About Music starring Ian <laughs> Hanawalt and Ian Webb as his co-host. Hey. You all know me, Grandmaster Daniel, and uh, I, we hope we'll see you again next week when we cover La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, you're right. This is a great time to announce the new podcast, <laughs> Movies About Music, num- number one in the world, uh, in most hype behind any podcast uh releasing three nfts this week um stay tuned if if you're into uh <laughs> biopics about artists that put their their soul into their work you right specifically specific we're not gonna do like poly, even though Moore. it's a good movie but yeah if you like if you're a fan of the movie selena come on by see what's see what it's like try it out See what it's like to be Selena? No, thank yeah. you. Check out movie, that's Movies About Music, the, the new podcast uh, hosted <laughs> by Ian Hunt Hennebolt here, uh, co-hosted by myself. And uh, we, yeah, we, we talk about uh, musician biopics, movies about music. Check it out. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, hey. Thank you, hey, Daniel. Hey. Real or, or fiction? Real or fiction? Yeah. Uh, so like Spinal Tap is included in that. Uh, we'll do. We'll eventually get there. Yeah, we will. Uh, walk the line, or uh, no, that's that one's real. Johnny Cash is real. <laughs> what are you trying uh, to say? Or is he a biopic? 
We don't know. Tune in <laughs> and find out. I mean, a lot a lot of these biopics are a lot of made up shit, like the doors. <laughs> <laughs> or the pick of destiny. We don't know pick the of, difference. Yeah, like pick of yeah. destiny for sure. Uh, That'll be on there. Yeah, for sure it, is we, real. Yeah, we'll we'll parse through it and we'll we'll dig deep and find what's uh, purposeful subtext supplanted by the director or or scriptwriter, or what is actually a, a, a realistic rendition of what happened in real time. You see, <laughs> La Bamba is one of the best movies in American cinema. And I'll give you 14 reasons uh, why you need to see. Okay. Uh, one, Richie Valens, a fantastic uh, uh, musician, uh, came up with a lot of good songs. Two, Lou Diamond Phillips, doesn't look like Richie Valens at all, but damn, he's pretty. Three, uh, Bob, the, the motorcycling uh, guy that. Shut up. Shut your ugly old time ancient ass up. Four, uh, Rosie, the, the the really likable friend that he met on the Orange Grove. Five, Donna, the woman he loves. But seven, yeah. seven, seven. Yeah. Uh, Call nine one one. The big bopper shows up, and boy is he big. Jim. Eight. Uh, don't take Jim. single uh, engine plane rides because because bad bonus? things happen. Jim. Nine. Uh, Buddy Holly is Weezer. I 11. can't believe you committed uh, suicide. 14. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? I can't help you out of this one, Jim. With all we've been through, I can't pull you out of this one. And that's the 14 reasons why La Bamba is the best movie ever. Oh, yeah. R- right on. Uh, I, th- I think that you bored Daniel to death. Or something happened with him. No, I blew his mind, man. Look, I bl- look he's, he's shocked by, the, by how many great things there are about La Bamba, <laughs> the movie. He goes, what? I had no idea Lou Diamond Phillips was that attractive. And he probably Googled it, picture, and he was like, yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he, in 1993, he was. I'll tell you, Matt, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Should have been Superman, dude. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, that that is an episode coming up. I'll be on. You're the host. Uh, our friends Johnny and Dustin will be on that one as well. Uh, let's go on to, uh, we haven't talked about P.D. Wheatstraw in about half an hour. Let's go back to <laughs> P.D. <Wheatstraw. laughs> um, uh, let, let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, the prompt, which I don't know. Can you make a sequel out of this? Can it, can you make a remake? Uh, if so, who would star in it? I mean, would you get Eddie Murphy to star in it? Would you get Ari Spears? To... I think Ari Spears would make a good P.D. Wheatstraw. We were yeah, about that, that earlier. Yeah, it's definitely not gonna happen. But yeah, yeah, he he would be the he would be the best. Uh, Nam, who would I want P.D. Wheatstraw to be? Fucking uh, shit, dude. David Lucas as P.D. Wheatstraw. He's a comedian. Uh, uh, yeah, from Kill Tony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He lives, he lives in Austin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you make a great TV show, dude. He, like, just damn, what? Damien Black people. He's so good at roasting. No, no, no. He's a roasting comedian. Uh, okay, okay. Which is, which is okay. Well, no, um, all these jokes are about like, hey, you, you look like a gay something. But dude, he could just open the first. No, I mean not all, but he could just. <laughs> Well, that's that's the ones that's the ones directed at Tony Hinchcliffe, and 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 you know, fair, you know, but like, but but he's he's a roast comedian, right? Like, and, and that's exactly yeah. what uh, Rudy okay. Ray Moore. Was. Well, I I feel you on that one. I feel you on that one. Uh, what I about think, you, man? Who, who, who do you, who do you, who do you think should play him? I well, I mean, well, if not Ari Spears, then definitely fucking. Uh, the guy in Black Dynamite who who played uh, the guy who always talked in rhyme. Uh, what what was his name, Daniel? I don't have my IMDb pulled up. I don't remember Damn. anybody's name. I, I, don't I remember Dynamite. that P.D. Weedstraw was played by Rudy Ray Moore, but that's only because we're talking about it right now. 
Okay. <laughs> Ian Webb, if you didn't have your name underneath your little screen there, I would not remember it. I'm sorry. Fair. Fair. Shut up. Uh, Daniel, uh, prompt. My, my, well, my prompt is not the same as yours. What I want to see, based on our uh, wonderful biopic, is I want to see Rudy Ray Moore playing in um, Petey Wheatstraw's Family Reunion. And I want it to be starring Petey Wheatstraw and Petey Wheatstraw and Petey Wheatstraw with Petey Wheatstraw as oh Petey God. Wheatstraw and his family in it, Petey Wheatstraw's Family but, Reunion. Uh, so, so Eddie Murphy has to be in this movie, right? Well, he's, he's playing every character. He's the, the devil, but everybody else <laughs> has to be played by Rudy Ray Moore. Uh, and can, I can would they, love to see this. Just beat the can the fucking Rose. clumps be in this movie too? Like I would exactly. prefer it not, but you meet the clumps, but beat the Weestros. No, I would <laughs> really, really, really enjoy seeing Rudy Ray Moore doing that style of movie because I think it takes a certain type of actor, and I know that we've got a couple of them that try to do it. But I would really enjoy seeing it. As so long as you're doing black exploitation, that is a new level of black exploitation. You don't have um, too many people trying to do that um, these days. Uh, that that not black exploitation films, and I feel like that would be really fun to see with Rudy Ray Moore. But it'd be tough since he's very old and/or possibly dead now. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but maybe if we could Ooh. time travel back to the 80s and have Rudy Ray Moore go ahead and do it, that'd be awesome. Dude, pretty sure he's dead now. But can I somebody... am too. He absolutely is dead. Is he died in 2012. In the next movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, he, if he wasn't dead, he would have like appeared in that Dolomite movie. Weekend you know at I mean? Petey Wheatstraws. Perfect. I'm ready for our next movie. <laughs> okay. Oh, Petey and the uh, Wheat I, I I think that they should do, uh, Eddie, Eddie Murphy good, should do a, a a sequel to Dolomite is my name, in which it, it shows the making of Petey Wheatstraw and Disco Godfather. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's see it. Let's I see mean, it. I'm I, in. I mean, it'd be basically the same movie. Like he's just doing the same ghetto shit over and over and over again. But it's fun. It's a good movie. It's a good. Set of yeah. Well, there's there's a lot of like like I mentioned before, dude. There's a lot of subtext here. Not as much as Blackula. It's not like that they're not out here preaching social justice like Blackula was, but but what they are doing is saying you know, uh, the old. He, it's all within the comedy uh, community where it's like, it, like they are making fun of the vaudeville style of of show. You know the the Amos and Andy. Uh, you know, two two guys going back and forth, because because then they they make them go bad, and then the new style is then uh the good the good shit, you know, the the fucking roasting and the new the new the new the Richard Pryor influenced stuff, which I'm sure was influenced to this, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Ian? Uh, I agree. <laughs> doctor, doctor. <laughs> Shut up! It's not gonna get old. There's no reason for that. <laughs> I, I, I no, it's not gonna get old. It's like just Petey Wheat Straw. We've got to make it. Let's get out of here. I don't believe that you can overdo that. I don't want to create an entire podcast based on it, but I feel like you could. And I watch it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, let's go ahead and rate this thing. Um, so, for production, it's fucking awful. It's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, the budget is nothing. What What was the budget? What was the budget of Petey Wistra? Like five bucks. Five no, bucks. dude. Uh, uh, the, the first one got a hundred thousand dollars. Dolomite. The first Dolomite got a hundred thousand dollars. So in nineteen seventy, whatever. So what's the budget in nineteen seventy seven for Petey Wheatstraw after they've experienced success at local box offices? I'm looking it up. 
Peter Wickstrom. This is uh, definitely one of those times the, we play a clip because we're all doing the phone thing, right? Peter Wickstrom. Uh, the budget <laughs> was seven hundred thousand dollars. Seven times what he what he got uh, what he the budget he had for the first one. Six hundred thousand dollars went into his wardrobe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, they didn't have to buy a car at least, like Superfly, but yeah, it all went into his wardrobe. Definitely. <laughs> Jesus, man, that, that's, so, that's crazy. I'll, that's, that's I'll, crazy. I'll give production three pimp canes, <laughs> and slow, I will slow. give enjoyment a lot more. Because this this was fun. Yeah. Uh, it's not my favorite Dolomite film, which is Human Tornado. I also like Dolomite above this. Um, for for one seventh of the budget, though, I'm talking about enjoyment. Yeah, yeah, you enjoyed it that much more for, but it was yeah. that much deeper. Yeah. Damn. Uh, so I'll say that I give enjoyment factor. Uh, seven watermelons. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa! Too far, hey, too far. That watermelon is make it more, make it more specific. Make it, it like, make it like is watermelon coming characters. out of a watermelon is one of the main characters in this movie. Watermelons being shot into. Come on, there's various ways you could reference it specifically to this watermelon. Watermelon. Uh, Ian, how about you? All right, so on production, I, I think you're being a little rough on them. I mean, for seven hundred thousand, I, I really do. That there are a few scenes in this movie that There's really hold up. And leotards. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> like I expect them to be. They are. They obviously ran out of budget towards the end, and I mean, who can blame them? <laughs> they're just. They're, I mean, they, it's such a fucking fever dream of a film. <laughs> uh. That the budget isn't really, I mean, production value is of less concern than just the overall vibe, you know? But it, that being said, I'll, I'll give them, I'll give them a, a four and a half, four and a half uh, 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 devil horns that look like nipples <laughs> out of 10. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We didn't We're touch more on that than yet. four and a half, but yes, that's fair. We didn't touch on that yet. Do you guys remember the devil horns? They look like nipples. Oh, yeah. I, I do. Little nipples, and you're like, "Why? Right. Are they are they erogenous zones?" Nobody. I had a lot why. of questions. All right. Okay. All right. Enjoyment. Uh, it was a good time. It was a good time. I watched this with a buddy of mine. Uh, we 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 kept like pausing, rewinding, looking at scenes over again, uh, and you know, kind of. Doing a mystery science th- three thousand shit on it, and it was a uh, it was a great movie for that. It's a great party movie, I, like like my buddy Ian said over there. So uh, I'm gonna give that a shit. I'm gonna give that a seven and a half. Bitch, are you talking to me? Out of ten. Excellent, Daniel. Uh, production value. I uh, I've really got to give it credit for the fact that we don't have uh, shaky cam in Hannibal. Uh, we don't have um, unfocused or uh, poorly lit scenes uh, in Webb. Um, <laughs> I don't, I, I didn't have problems with it. It's not good. There's lots of things wrong with the production value, but I like how all of our characters were believable in the clothes that they had. My personal favorite production value thing was our um, was our wino. Uh, the version of him with his bright, bright, bright sunglasses stumbling around in a graveyard in the dark. Just... <laughs> We're very drunk. And uh, I, I just, I liked it enough to give it all the way up to uh, 5 out of 10. Uh, now, and, um, right. Oh, that didn't work. It didn't work there. <laughs> <laughs> Get a snap after that. Uh, sweaty palms. All right. Then, as far as uh, enjoyment value, this is to me one of the most enjoyable black exploitation films. I think because it requires 
next to no explanation because there's no way you can explain it. Production value is low. Um, plot is not there. So you can just jump in, jump out, and enjoy it. Uh, my my biggest problem with it is that uh, there's some very, very, very uncomfortable scenes to have. I would not play this for a party unless I knew 100% that I had a crowd that was not going to be offended by it. Because, I, frankly, there's there's parts of it that I don't want to have to explain to somebody. Oh, no, no, oh, no. Well, no. Let me, yeah, let, let's no. go back 50 years and talk about what was happening at this time. I don't want to have to sit somebody yeah. down and, like, explain what the black exploitation genre is. And I think that the first, like, 15 minutes or so, you have to sit somebody down and explain <laughs> what black exploitation is. After okay. the first yeah, yeah. 15 minutes, though, uh, a solid um, uh, <laughs> a solid 9 out of 10 um, uh, is, is there. And uh, don't worry about it. I'll explain it later. Is my uh, my reading okay? Nice for the entire nice. black exploitation genre. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sweet. Uh, so that'll do it for this episode of Culture Trash Horror Baby Grind. Uh, again, like we were saying, check out Ian's uh, new show coming out. By the time this episode comes out, it should come out next week because you were talking about like Thanksgiving, right? around that time it may or may not be out yet if it's not out yet try again next week if it's not out next week try again <laughs> the next following week but it's movies about music i promise you it'll be fucking good so uh yeah we'll, we'll uh end it here and thanks for watching everybody hey, hey, hey stick around and, and make sure to sign up for the patreon too stick around for that that's right uh, if you, if you buy the Patreon, you'll see me. I'm going to solve this Rubik's Cube. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to miss it, up, folks. Is it, is it just a joke, or can I actually do it? You will never know unless you sign up for the Patreon. Uh, only by giving us money can, can you find out. Look, it's all mixed up. It's so hard. Look at it. I can't do that, or can I? Does it change color with heat? It's not a boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't We've got to make it. Let's get out of here.